Hey guys, so I just made a video showing you how to make your own menstrual uh, pads out of flannel sheets. It does need to be flannel, it needs to be 100% cotton because you're going to be able to boil these, which our great grandmothers years ago would use clean white flannel cloths as their menstrual cloths and they wouldn't shape them like we do because their clothes weren't tight like ours. It didn't really matter if the pads were bulky, but we need them to be very fitted and to be very sleek and smooth and so they are shaped. So this is how to make it. And I wanted to show you before I started what they look like when they, they're finished. And they have an insert that you can change out or you can add as many as you want. Bit, a little bit of leeway. So I'll just make a mark. I just make a mark in my sheet. I'll double it over. On a so now I'm going to double that. See that? So now I have one, two, three, four layers to make that pad. Okay? And whichever, whether you decide to do it lengthwise or widthwise, just really doesn't matter. Okay? So. That's all I need to do. And now I could do another one. I could fold it over again. And cut another one. When you're making any of these, the longer the fabric st strip, the less cutting you have to do. So I have these that I had pre-cut and I have this strip, so all I've got to do to do my insert is just line it up to the size that I want. And there is my insert ready to be sewn. And it's ridiculous to cut out four layers of fabric rather than just doing folds. Now I'm going to come in and I mean if you wanted to do this as a home business you totally could. So now I'm going to come in and just get kind of an estimate on how long I want these to be. And I need three, was it three? One, two, three, yeah. I need three. And again if I was just, you know, doing a ton of these, I would, I would cut it all out beforehand before I started. And really, 12 pads and like maybe 20 of the inserts would be more than enough for most women on their period. But if you have a heavier period, make more. And I find them much more absorptive than um, store-bought. Okay, so now... You have to, if you don't do the edges on these, then they'll run. So I'm just going to quick doop, 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 doop. And anything that has plastic on it that's fabric like this pretty much needs to have that done to it. But all I did was lay out a menstrual pad and you can take the sticker stuff off of it and just press it down on a piece of fabric or on a piece of paper to make it. That works too. And I just trace around to make myself a pattern. And you'd only have to do this once. And I do have a paper pattern, but I'm just going to show you. And this is not an overnight pad, but if this was, if I wanted to make an overnight pad, I would just get an overnight pad from the grocery store.
and I'm going to pin them together on the inside of the pad. One, two. And you see, I don't need a pattern. You don't need a pattern. Three. As far as, well, you don't need a pattern <laughs> besides just one you can draw it yourself. Okay? So there's my, there's my layers. So I'm done with that. And I'm going to pin down the middle just so that I don't get any lumps in it. So there I am. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sewing machine and I'm going to sew the outline of the pad. And then once I'm done, I'm going to come back and cut on the outside. On a treadle sewing machine you have a straight stitch and at least on a traditional one. On a traditional treadle sewing machine all you have is a straight stitch and the way that you do fancier things with your treadle is by using the attachments that come with it. So now now I'm just going to make sure I leave myself a little bit of space away from everything else. And I use a safety pin to close the flaps, to close the wings of the pad. Um, and so, by the way, when you make your pattern, you do want... You do want a, 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 a sanitary napkin with wings. For one thing, it protects your clothes better because it gives another layer. But for the other, it just is so easy to... Um, use it for the flaps to, to secure things. That pin doesn't get used for anything else. And, and so this is the way that I prefer to do it. You can cut the pieces out individually, but I really like just being able to cut things out at one, all at one time. So now there you have it. There is your sanitary napkin. And if, it, if this was all you had, you could totally use it without the fillers. And um, if you don't have a sewing machine with the zigzag, what you do at this point, is you do a hemming stitch. If you wanted to, you could just do a loop around. Make sure that you're on the inside of the stitch because what's actually going to hold that hem on and hold this edge, let's see, what's going to hold this edge Come on. What's going to hold this edge is the straight stitch that you just stitched. And so you want to be on the on the inside of that stitch right here. So we'll be doing it wrong or I'm probably doing it backwards. But really for those of you who are newbies, you'll get it after a bit. You can get a book to teach you how to do it. There we go. That's how I want it. Okay. So you're going to put it in from the front, through the back, it always takes me a minute to restart it. And this is a, this is a hemming, this is how you hem handkerchiefs too. And by the way, if you want to make reusable handkerchiefs, this is how you do it. You get flannel sheets, <coughs> you cut them to the size you want, you put on a straight stitch, tighten that a little bit. You put on a straight stitch and then once you have the straight stitch on you can hem it really nice. Whenever I'm doing any kind of sitting work I, I'm on a bouncy ball because it helps me to hold my core in so that my back doesn't get sore and sewing is no exception. So I have a Hobby Faf 1022 and it cost me $200 16 years ago. So again, I do not own I do not own a serger. I've looked into getting one and then I always thought, "Oh, my sewing machine can just handle it." As long as I have double fold bias tape 
and some kind of hemming zigzag type stitch, I am fine without. D, at least on my machine, is just your zigzag. So I'm just going to go ahead and start. And when I do it by machine, because it's sloppier, I go over it at least twice. If I was doing it by hand, I would only go over it once. And it is so much different than using a treadle. So funny. Okay, so I start with a straight stitch just to go over and make sure it catches. I wait for the needle to come up. I turn it to my zigzag and I go ahead. is the part where it would be helpful to have a marker or some other kind of marking tool to show the width of your liner. So here's the width of this liner. So here's our, our insert and I'm going to line it up. And I'm just going to mark where I want those. And you can just use chalk. You can use whatever you want to mark it. The other thing you can do, I wonder if I did it on this one. I don't think I did. And this liner is quite thin. Usually I don't make them this thin. But now I'm going to take my little... pieces and put them just where I can see the mark and just pin it so that it's holding it in place. So there's one. And it's okay just to eyeball it. It just it isn't rocket science. All you need is a straight stitch. I'm going to cut that thread while I'm looking at it. Okay. And I'm just going to go a little tiny bit wider than where the mark is so that it can slip in easily. So I'm going to go a little bit wider than where the actual mark is so that the liner will, or the insert will go in easily. And straight stitch. Kind of a bigger straight stitch. I'll tack it. I'll lift up my needle. I won't cut it. I'll just move to the next one. There's no point in making more work for yourself by just cutting it because then you just kind of have to start over and reposition. Make sure my needle's up. Turn it. Go to the next one, lift my needle up, go to the next one, where was that mark, there it is, lift, go to the next one, hopefully I don't run over my pin. Now I cut it. And now I take all my pins out at the same time rather than having messed with them. 
rather than having messed with them this whole time. I can now take all of my pins out at the same time. I'm not wasting effort in trying to do it one step at a time instead of doing all of it at the same time. And so now I'm going to go and cut my threads and know my vacuum does not love me. Now the reason that these look like they have the little tabs, little tabs that are kind of flopping around on the side is because again that insert was quite a bit thinner than most of them that I make. I just wanted to show you how to make it without cutting out separate pieces. So and then do the same on the other side. Just cut all those extra pieces of string. And I would honestly say just do every step at the same time on all of them so that you kind of get into a and in, what's the word, uh, like a conveyor belt. Okay, so now I'm going to take my inserts. And first off, I'm just going to do a seam down the middle. That will hold all of these thick pieces together better so that they're not trying to move around on me. Okay? I'm going to do it in a straight stitch and I'm going to do it to a longer stitch so that it's not um, puckering because it's kind of thick where it's flannel. Yeah, that's still bigger than I want. So the treadle would definitely be better for this part. The treadle really likes heavy, thick material. Okay, so now I'm going to go from there and I'm going to sew all the way around and I'm going to cut off this corner because this corner is going to make things bulky. I'm going to hold it flat so that all the layers stay nice and flat. You see, I didn't have to pin anything. So I wasn't wasting time doing something that, you know, gets very monotonous over the course of making 12 of these. So the only reason I'm really doing this right now is to kind of baste the layers together for, so that they will lie really nice and flat when you're wearing them. see it is not an exact science and it goes very very quickly once you get on a roll. So all I'm going to do now is cut off these corners and even things up. So I'm just going to even things up so that I don't have any like way out there layers that aren't the same length as everything else. So just making it a little tidier and you don't have to cut these out in like individual squares like this one. All I really needed to do is get something that was the right height and then multiples sideways. So when you're making these, when you're making the refills, all you have to do is get something that's the right height and fold it like this all right so straight stitch and now I'm going to go to my zigzag and do the edge Okay, so that's what it looks like on this side. That's what it looks like on this side. Where's my other one? Okay, and so I'm going to put in the insert so you can see what it looks like. 
And the nice thing is, is that you can use these inserts as panty liners, and again, all you need is a safety pin. So that's what it looks like. And then what you do is you put these into your panties like this, fold the arms over, and then just take a safety pin and safety pin this part, and you have this lovely, lovely sanitary napkin that, for me, one of these will last all day, so I kind of have to discipline myself to change them because they, these never fill up and get soaked. They just work so well. All of my supplies for it at a secondhand store, so uh, any kind of flannel sheet and um, these little ribbons are, I don't buy any of this at a crafting store or online or anything. I just watch at garage sales and stuff for sewing notions. And I walk through on my treadle how to sew these, how to sew it on my electric sewing machine, and also how to sew it by hand. So it doesn't matter where you are on this. I don't own a serger because I can do everything that I want to do as long as I have bias tape or I can do it by hand. I don't think it's worth having a $2,000 machine that just hems things for you because there's many options to be able to hem things. So um, I think they're very pretty. I like to use these because not only do they save me money, but they are so much more absorptive than when, what you buy in the store. And um, I don't have as much junk going into landfills, so I don't have to pay for as much garbage to be picked up. And um, I think they're just healthier for you. Um, again, I boil mine. I have a pot that is specifically for boiling my sanitary napkins. I will put my napkins when I am done with them into a two quart jar. This is not a two quart jar, it's a one quart, but I'm just showing you. A two quart jar, you do not leave the lid on. It will cause nasty stagnation if there's not free air. So you fill this with water. I put my pads in to soak. I rinse them right after I take them off, and that may sound really gross, but when I get into the shower, I take my sanitary napkin in with me and just put it on the floor of the shower and let the water run onto it and then I squeeze it out and put it into this and that way there's not so much blood. You do have to remember that it is a bodily flu a body fluid. You need to be very careful that they are sanitary because you're putting them in an area that's moist and that doesn't have as much air as it could, which means that it's a prime place to actually store bacteria inside your sanitary napkin. So when I'm ready to be done with my period, I take all of my cloths, I put them into my pot with water, and I boil them with um, washing soda. And then I pour that out into the toilet, and then I put some fresh water in, and I boil it again, and I boil it until the water runs clear. And that's how I do it. You can also start that process if you don't want to have to like rinse your pads out after you use them in the shower. You could just keep them in your jar of water and pour that off and put them in a wash cycle. But a wash cycle, even if you use uh, bleach, Clorox, isn't going to get it as clean as just boiling it.